Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a beautiful 12th of March, 2022. Coming to the Cresting Up podcast. The ever uncanny storm is on our horizon. Episode 165. My take on politics of uh, the past little while. The war in Ukraine and other hypocrites in the midst. Please stick around. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not fight me. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. From Western Canada. This is the Krusty Canuck Podcast, a Canadian veteran's point of view on political, social, economic issues, and life. He is Krusty. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Krusty Canuck Podcast. I'm your host, Krusty Canuck, on this beautiful 12th of March, 2022. And I guess the news is nothing but what's going on in Ukraine. Yes, the war in Ukraine. Big bullies are sitting there striking out at a small country like Ukraine, the bread belt of Europe as we see it. And, of course, all the experts weigh in and project about more inflation, gas prices going through the roof, the cost of bread and other uh, food items going through the roof, too. Uh, We can honestly say that it's nothing but BS, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this is just my ramble and rant based on the information that I've been receiving and what I've seen on mainstream media, independent outlets, and let me tell you this straight up, it's all an effing joke, okay? It sucks that Ukraine's going through what it is right now. It, it does suck. And I'm not going to make light of it. I'm not going to sit and try to justify any side, okay? Myself, I've seen combat. It sucks, I know. But it seems that everyone's focusing on a, a little country like Ukraine getting bullied by Russia. Now, I'm not blaming Russians. I'm not blaming Ukrainians. OK, I'm blaming the Putin regime and a handful of desperados in all of our governments that are encouraging a war. That simple. OK. How else do you look at it? Now, we could sit and talk about conspiracy theories all F and day to we're blue in the face about where money is going here, where money is going there. You know, human trafficking, conspiracies, corruption. We all know that every democratic country has had its share of corruption. Doesn't matter if it's Maggie Thatcher in Britain. Doesn't matter if it was Lyndon B. Johnson in the United States. Pierre Elliott Trudeau in Canada. Chancellor Merkel in Germany. It goes back and forth, back and forth like bad gas. Okay. My take is is simple on this, ladies and gentlemen. It's wrong what's happening in Ukraine. I get it. It's terrible. It's terrible. But what I don't understand is that we have a government in this country, Canada, okay, last month was determined to crush the Freedom Convoy by any means necessary, okay, by instilling the Emergencies Act, which hasn't been used since the last World War, or correction, I stand, sorry, hasn't been used since the FLQ crisis of October of 1971, or is it 70? Anyhow, the last time it was used, was at that time in the 70s. And then it was reinstated as the Emergencies Act in 1988, which Justin Trudeau and his party and his NDP backers graciously put into power, all because they were afraid of a handful of truckers in Ottawa, people that didn't destroy any property, people that didn't damage any property or beat up anyone or cause any undue stress other than people being discomforted for a while. Now, What I don't understand is that we have elected officials who are afraid of a handful of truckers, okay, and instigated certain laws and instigated certain emergency powers to stop it, which they did, okay? And I have to add that the police that were there were kind of brutal to some of these individuals, right? One of the reporters from Rebel Media was actually hit with a tear gas uh, canister, Uh, A couple other reporters were actually sprayed in the face with pepper spray, not to mention countless windows and windshields and dashboards that were destroyed by the authorities, trucks that were towed and spray painted and damaged in the process. And yet there was no damages to businesses, no damages to people's homes, just subtle inconveniences. And yet here's the government flipping the switch, jumping the gun, saying, okay, 
Emergency Measures Act. We have to stop this right now. And yet we have the same prime minister and his followers, Christian Freeland, Melanie Jolie, and others, who are in solidarity with the world against this whole issue with what Russia is doing. Now, I agree the fact that Russia is way the fuck out of line. I agree with that. I also agree with the fact that we should do what we can to help those less fortunate in any kind of crisis. Okay, And I believe that, yes, we should give refuge to the Ukrainians that come to Canada. Yes, by all means. But here's a question I pose, though. When our government was instilling the rule of the iron fist down these truckers' throats by raiding their bank accounts, putting them in jail for mischief, right, and giving them a hard time for standing up against the mandates, are they going to enforce the same vaccinal mandates on the Ukrainians fleeing the war? Hmm? Something to think about, eh? That's just my take. Now, I... I personally don't care if anyone's vaccinated or not. I don't care if you got the jab or if you do have the jab. <clears throat> I'm not going to judge anybody on their medical status. I'm not going to segregate people on their medical status. I don't believe in segregation. I thought the majority of Canadians didn't believe in segregation, but according to our prime minister and other powers that be, right? For Canadians, we have to be segregated. We have to have these vaccines to save lives. Meanwhile, defending democracy of another nation, but still screwing the democracy here. What a contrast, eh? Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And if you like and hear what you see, ladies and gentlemen, please click like, subscribe, and comment. On all social media platforms, you can find me on Podbean, Rumble, Brighton, and Amazon, too. And to my YouTube subscribers, please give me a thumbs up, give me a comment, give me a like, share this all around your social media platforms. Every little bit helps. Anyway, carrying on again with uh, the storm on the horizon, the contradiction of our government compared to the, the world stage. Now, I'm all for democracy. I'm all for liberty. I'm all for common sense. I want people to go about their business and do their thing, and I want them to thrive and shine as they should. Okay? But when we have elected leaders in this country instilling Emergency Measures Act, taking money from people, freezing accounts because they're deemed unacceptable, and yet we got a prime minister in Europe right now speaking about democracy and pro this and pro that. What exactly are you talking about, Justin? Hmm? What exactly are you really talking about? Listen for yourself. See what this clown has to say. On a major economy. Oh, sorry. I got to queue up the video again. My apologies, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I had a queued before. <laughs> Just bear with me. But I think you catch my point here. Okay. You, you, you catch my drift when it comes to the simple fact that Mr. Trudeau doesn't really care about Canada. Okay. He cares more about his bottom line, his image, what he thinks, what he says, what he does, and what he wants to do. Right. He doesn't give two shits about you or me doesn't care about the Inuit, doesn't care about the Cree, doesn't care about the First Nations, doesn't care about Ukrainian Canadians, doesn't care about Jewish Canadians, Christian Canadians. He doesn't care about Canada. He doesn't. He doesn't give two rats butts about Canada, about anything other than what he wants to see. Okay? Well, what he wants to do. It's that simple. And yet he fails to realize it. So here's the full speech uh, from just about 30 seconds. You know, I might adjust your volume accordingly. I've had some issues with the volume on this page here. But like I said, ladies and gentlemen, adjust your video or uh, your volume accordingly uh, to listen to the, uh, the clap.
And honestly, like, <laughs> what would you get out of that? Virtue signal. That's all it is. And, and that's all this government has ever done is virtue signal, virtue signal, virtue signal. And there was another article I read uh, today uh, about the infrastructure, about how Canada doesn't have the infrastructure to, to ship a lot of uh, oil and resources to Europe. Now, the government's been elected, been in power since 2015. You would think of all the money that's been spent on infrastructure projects here, infrastructure projects there in Africa and in China and the Middle East. You would think they would have built something for Canada, in Can for, for Canadians, right? They bought the pipeline in Canada, but they have no plans of actually building it or finishing it. They ixnade Energy East. They don't want to fight for Keystone XL. But Joe Biden wants to call it quits, which he did do. And, you know, what was done about it? Nothing. Nothing. But they're standing in solidarity for democracy, and they want to bring uh, energy resources to Europe, but they don't have the means to do it. So they had the past seven years to do something like that, to, to put Canada on the world stage, on the world market, too. We're the third and fourth when it comes to fossil fuels and natural gas, but we don't have the means to bring it to the world. Why is that, right? See, you see, more the hypocrisy is when the federal government was talking about foreign money coming into the truckers' convoy, the people at GoFundMe actually testified saying maybe 9 or 10% of the funds that were given to the Freedom Convoy came from private Americans. The rest came from Canada. So they basically had to eat crow over that. And yet when you look at all the influences and all the people that have said no to the oil sands, no to exporting our oil and gas in this country with the likes of Jane Fonda, Leonardo DiCaprio, and other conglomerates, not to mention the Tides Foundation, Make Way Foundation, who have put money into the green scheme of this country. Is that not foreign investment? Hmm? Is that not foreign investment telling the rest of us what to do? Right? Telling us how to do things? Hmm? Is that not foreign investment uh, trying to uh, hold Canadians hostage with our own resources? Isn't it? Correct me if I'm wrong here, but <laughs> when you just hear something that like that, that ri ridiculous stuff come from Justin Trudeau, and yet he was a firm iron hammer against the truckers' convoy in this country. Who exactly is he working for? We know he's not working for us. Is it Klaus Schwab and his great reset? You will own nothing and be happy. Jawohl, this is what we do. Yes, you will like this, Justin, won't you? Yes. You will do it this way and make us rich and powerful, right? It's all the conspiracy theorists that uh, turned around and put these individuals on the spot in regards to the World Economic Forum. I guess those conspiracy theorists don't look too stupid now, do they? Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And you know, ladies and gentlemen, carrying on with episode 165, a storm on a horizon. Yes. So is World War III going to happen? Fuck, I hope not. Is there going to be a bigger fight that we see on the mainstream media? Has the mainstream media actually showed us real footage over and over again or just regurgitated a few headshots here and there? Now, I know CTV and CBC have reporters on the ground. Okay. Some are in Poland. Some are actually situated on the west side of the country in Ukraine, are they actually going further east to actually get some real combat footage? Okay. Are they going to venture farther east to see exactly what's going on or just based on reports they hear from uh, certain peasants and certain locals? See, I'd be impressed the mainstream media actually took the initiative and took a, a journalist, a proper journalist, not just somebody with a woke agenda or a half-assed fucking degree, and actually had eyes on the shit. Okay. I would be really, really impressed if CBC, CTV, and Global actually had real camera people on the ground looking in and seeing what the hell is going on. 
rather than just a hearsay we see every 15, 20 minutes based on the editor's news cycle. Okay. And that goes to the same for CNN, CBS, MNSBC, whatever BC, PC, whatever abbreviations out there in the mainstream media. Okay. That's what I'd like to see. Okay. Now, hats off the individuals that have stood up and volunteered for the Ukraine forces to help out, per se. Okay. To, to, to show initiative to get out there. My war fighting days are done. They are. Other than, let's say, somebody coming to Canada to stir some shit, to damage some property and kill some of our people, then I might put the war face back on. But until that day, this is what you get, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? I'm going to keep using the free speech as much as we're allowed to have it, depending on when C-11 gets passed or not. And to, to the first-time listeners of this podcast, you as an individual... To all my listeners out there, all my wonderful listeners and viewers and fans alike, okay, you as individuals have every bloody right to listen to, to assess, to enjoy to your heart's leisures. If you like what I do, great. If you don't like what I do, you don't have to watch. It's that simple. I thought we used to have that choice growing up. Our parents had that choice when they were growing up, and our grandparents had that choice while they were growing up, too. We have the world at our fingertips here every time you go on through the internet and to find information to your heart's desire. It doesn't matter if you want to watch uh, mud wrestlers. doesn't matter if you want to watch bull riders. doesn't matter if you want to watch hockey, sports, anything. It's right there at your fingertips. And you as an individual, you have the ability to assess what's good, what is not good, what is good to see, what is not good to see. But now we have governments in our Western Hemisphere have tried to censor and control what we see and do. Doesn't matter if it's big tech, doesn't matter if it's little tech, doesn't matter if it's a, a provincial government or a state government or federal governments via Etats-Unis or via Canada. It doesn't matter. And we're seeing this. And now we have politicians that are in solidarity with Ukraine, which is good. But they also don't have solidarity with their own people trying to find light at the end of their fucking manufactured darkness. Way to go. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. I'm carrying on even further, too. It's like... Excuse <coughs> me. The past two years have been tough on everybody. I'm not, I'm not denying that, too. Okay. And I think yesterday was the celebration, or the celebration, to say the least, <laughs> uh, the, the observation of two years of this pandemic. Two years of this. Two years of this garbage where every medical expert in Canada, United States, Britain, you know, to the WHO of the United Nations, saying that two weeks is all we need to flatten the curve. Two! weeks to flatten the curve two years later we still got to flatten we still got to mandate people getting jabs we have to mandate a jab here we got to mandate a jab there we got to mandate 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 fucking mandates over and over again for what control okay now i've confessed earlier on this uh show a, few, a couple months back ladies and gentlemen that i went and i got my two jabs but I did it for my family, and I did it for my wife. Okay? My wife has a resting condition, and she was given advice by her medical professionals to possibly consider getting it. Now, they never told her that she must, and her employer never said to her, Yo, you must. My employer never said to me, you must. I did it in my own accord. Okay? Now, I don't feel any different. I don't feel weaker. I don't feel sick. Okay. Probably because I tried to eat right and I tried to stay relatively fit. And my job kind of keeps me fit too. I'm in and out of the vehicle all the time. I'm shoveling, I'm moving. So I'm mobile with my work all the time. So, in a way, I'm still getting exercise and I try to eat good vegetables, good lean cuts of meat while we can still afford it. And my biggest downfall is I still smoke cigarettes, ladies and gentlemen. And I have the occasional drink on occasion. But I don't 
fill my face with garbage. I don't fill my face with processed foods. I try to do what's right for me. And that's what you should do, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we should all do. Do what's right for you as an individual. I made the decision to go get inoculations, and I did. Didn't want to. I was hesitant. I Really, I didn't. But I did. But now when the government was starting to enforce a third on everybody, truckers got wind of this, and they said, fuck this, we had enough. Right? And you see the contrast. A year ago, everyone's praising the medical officials and truckers alike for keeping things going. Truckers stand up and say, well, we had enough of this garbage. Let's get some change here. What did our federal government do? Kai Bosch it and penalized everyone who donated to the best of their ability. How is that right? Hmm? How is that democratic? You just saw what our prime minister said in Europe about defending our democracies. Well, how the hell did he defend our democracy here? Did anybody in the Liberal cabinet go out and talk these individuals? Did anybody in the Liberal Party or the NDP for that matter, or even Les Blancs Québécois, did they go out and say, hello, what's going on? What's on your mind? Right? I have to give it hats off to conservatives for doing it. You know? But some of my conservative friends beg to differ. Right? Some of my conservative friends couldn't be bothered to say, hello, what's on your mind? But like I stated in my campaign, when I was running for the Veterans Coalition Party, okay, I want to represent my constituency. I want to represent you, voters and taxpayers alike. Now, there were a few candidates that I worked with during the election that I saw out there. Hey, good for them. And regardless of our political beliefs or not, they took the initiative to go out and talk to these individuals. Okay. Where was I, Prime Minister, hiding because he had the coof? And a few other key figures in our government were in hiding too. And for what? Brownie points? A few extra bucks? I got to say, storm is on the horizon. So is it is it World War III that's going to happen? I hope not. I hope not. Because that, that wouldn't just suck for Ukraine and Russia. That would suck for Europe. And that would suck for North America. Okay? I'm going to pose a question here to you, my listeners. And if you want to comment on this question at the end of this video in the comment section, right, where, whether it's Rumble, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on Brighton, or when you see this on Facebook or anywhere else, okay, I want you to answer this question. Okay. If it ends up being like Red Dawn, and we've all seen the movie Red Dawn, not the, 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 the sick remake they tried to make in 2011. That was just terrible. The classic 80s movie Red Dawn with Patrick Swayze and Charlie Sheen and uh, who else was in it? A couple of other famous uh, teen actors from that time. Let's say you're walking your dog and you're, you know, you're with your wife or you're with your loved one taking a walk outside and you look up in the sky and you see parachutes coming down. You know, what would your reaction be? Right? I look forward to your answers in the comments section if you if you care to answer. What would your reaction be if you're walking around going about your daily business in this country and all of a sudden you saw a couple of airplanes and all of a sudden parachutes are coming out of it? What, what would your reaction be? Think about that. Because even though I, I didn't want to use a movie analogy <laughs> for, for this, Based on the efforts that Russia has made in the past 20 years, based on the advancements, based on the amount of money they have made with their oil and gas and their exports and imports. Hmm. Think about that. Now, regardless of the sanctions that have gone on, you can sanction and sanction and sanction all you want. Okay. But I think Putin's got something up his sleeve. And regardless of how you feel about Donald Trump, or how you felt about that president or this president or another president, you realize Putin didn't do much when Trump was in power, right? Hmm. And regardless if you love the guy or hate the guy, things were done and things were a bit safer. Am I saying the world was a safer place under Donald J. Trump's uh, 
presidency? I don't know. I know a lot of people hated him, but there were no bigger wars going on because of him. Something to think about. Right? But again, I'll ask that question again, ladies and gentlemen. And if you want to add it to the comments, please do. What would you do? What would your reaction be if you're just walking around minding your own business and you look in the sky and you see men in parachutes coming down? Think about that. Because that could be a reality if World War III does happen. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. I guess, hey, ladies and gentlemen, click like, subscribe, and share this all around, too, please. And uh, ask me anything you want to know, too. And uh, coming up this Tuesday on the 15th at 515 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, I will be live again to take all your questions. I'll be live on YouTube, Facebook, and Rumble. So please tell your friends and family and fans of the podcast alike that I will be live this Tuesday, March 15th at 515 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So I'm going to try to get a live stream every time I get a chance because of my work schedule. I cannot make as many episodes as I'd like to for this podcast, but nonetheless, I try to get out there, get the word out there and for my fans alike. And please click like, subscribe, share this content all around your social media platforms and help guys like me out. Try to encourage more people to think for themselves and get different perspectives rather than relying on mainstream media, worrying about their makeup and their optics. When we should worry about the, the fate of humanity as we speak. I'm going to carry on again with more of the uh, storms on the horizon. So because of all the stuff with Ukraine and the contradictions and the hypocrisies we see from all Western leaders, okay, how, how are we going to react to this? Now, I admit, I briefly thought about volunteering my time to go to Ukraine to fight the Russian onslaught, Putin's Russian, Russian kibosh, right? But what would I gain from that? Will my PTSD come back and haunt me even further? Even though sometimes the demons do rear their ugly heads on occasion. Just to say, hello, how are you? How are you doing? Just checking in to see if you get the odd nightmare or two. <laughs> how would that affect my wife? How would it affect my family and my friends? People that I've been friends with for the better part of 30 years. How would it affect them? As much as I would love to be noble and to do the right thing, how would that be right? Hmm? That's something to think about, ladies and gentlemen. And to everybody that has listened to this show and thought about doing the same thing, something to think about. How would it be right? We know Ukraine's a bit of an underdog. Yeah, okay. But then when you look at the size of the Russian military, regardless of what happened during the Cold War or after the Cold War, they could take their air force and annihilate any small nation they wanted to. They have the means to do it. They have the production to do it. Right? They have the manpower to get things built, to get things in the air, to get things on the road, to get things at sea. Right? They have enough oil and gas to make it happen for themselves. The manufacturing hub is just phenomenal. Something to think about. I don't know. It's you know. I'm not taking sides here, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I I back up Ukraine, but I also back up the Russian people that are against this fight, and we're not seeing enough of that or hearing enough of that too. Regardless of the censorship that the MSM has told all of us about what's going on in Russia, we have seen footage of protesters saying, "Enough of this. We don't want this war. What are you doing?" You well, know? and what are they doing? What are we hearing? What are we seeing? You know? And there's all these rumblings too about certain Ukraine battalions that have an affiliation with the swastika or certain Ukraine officials that have an affiliation with a certain battalion that's based on Nazi doctrine. You know? I don't know what to say about that. But when you look at uh, national socialism and communism, there's no real difference. They're both totalitarian. They're both authoritarian, and they're both oppressive, and they're both based in socialism. So it doesn't bloody fucking matter if one side's Nazis and one side's commies. 
They both have dirty doctrines that should be annihilated as far as I'm concerned. I think democracy should reign supreme regardless. Right? But who am I, right? I'm just some crusty Canuck. But getting back to the whole storm on the horizon, is something looming? Is something big going to happen? I hope not. I, I don't want to see or hear about anybody pressing a little red button, sending a rocket over here or a rocket over there. What's that, what's that going to prove? You take out a city, you take out 40 kilometers around that city, you got yourself a nice pretty little crater. But then the fallout from that, I think the half-life of a fallout from uh, a modern nuke is what, maybe 40 years? So we'll say 80 years of fallout from one rocket, from one nuke? I could be wrong, but still, that's a long time. That's a long time to have a certain area of a country or a peninsula or any, or any area for that matter under a certain quarantine because the radiation will give you cancer and you'll die painfully and slowly. People forget that nuclear bombs aren't like what they are, well, like where they were, correction, in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Was it five megatons or 15 megatons? Now they're what, 50, 100, even, even more? You throw a nuke at a city, then what? Okay, city's annihilated. And 40 kilometers around it is slowly getting annihilated, incinerating, burning as, as we speak. And then what? It just goes away? No. Radiation lingers. It compromises the topsoil, every water table, every piece of vegetation in that area. It lingers and it thrives. It goes in the atmosphere because of uh, the explosion, all the dust particles raining down nuclear winter. And then what? It's like a cloud that just hovers over. So the fallout from that one explosion can cause a lot of devastation on a global scale. So you think the recent pandemic was terrible? Hmm. Guess again. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And just a reminder, folks, too, if you like and hear what you see, please click like and subscribe and share this all around your social media platforms. Once again, as a reminder, too, I will be live this Tuesday, March 15th, 5.15 p.m. I will be live on YouTube, Facebook, and Rumble to take all your questions if you ever if you feel to, to ask me anything you want to know. And don't be shy. Use my email, crustybcanuck67 at gmail.com. Write me an email or two if you want. Send a compliment, send me a question, send me a debate, send me hate mail. I don't mind. I want to hear what you have to say, ladies and gentlemen, please. And, you know, click like, subscribe, comment all around too. You know, help us, uh, help us independent folk get our algorithms up and running so we can get our word out there too, right? I'm carrying on again with more Storm on the Horizons. Storms, yeah. That's something lingering. Now, I've said this before, I projected this before, about a big fight on its way, right? Will the battlefield be in Europe, like the last two world wars? Or will it come to North American shores, or South American shores, or the Caribbean? Will it be in Africa? We don't know. By the way things are looking, it'll probably be in Europe. And it might rear its ugly head in North America. If more and more of these politicians keep being hypocrites and lying to the voters and the taxpayers, we might see some fights here in North America. Good ones or bad ones? I don't know. But what's a good fight? There's only two people I know in my circle that have actually raised a rifle in vain. Myself and a friend of mine. Everybody else that I know in my circle has not. And I hate to see the day where they have to. I don't want to do that anymore. But like I said, when it comes to posing the question earlier about what if you're walking around one day and you're minding your business, you look up at the sky and all of a sudden you see, ooh, little men in parachutes coming down. What are you going to do? Fight or flight? 
you back a dog into a corner, he's going to do one of two things. He's going to either submit or he's going to bite. Something to think about, folks. I just want to see the world get along. We're all going to have our problems. Every government has its problems. Every government has its corruption, has its shitheads, has its pariahs, has its hidden agendas. But there's still a fundamental agenda out there, democracy and freedom. Freedom to choose, freedom to be, freedom to read, freedom to breathe, freedom to drink and breathe, freedom to pray and dance and be merry and celebrate your life to the best of your ability. It doesn't matter if you're gay, straight, bi, tri, pan, tran, whatever, whatever abbreviations out there. As long as you don't hit people and take their stuff. Hey, eh? it's that simple. While people are promoting the whole democracy of Ukraine and freedom from Ukraine, there are still people in this country and in the United States that are tattling on each other for not masking up properly or getting a jab. So the contrast is all fucky, isn't it? I stress to my listeners and viewers out there too, to do better. We can do better than that. Let's, let's, let's say this pandemic is done. As far as I'm concerned, I'm done with it. I, I don't know about you, but I'm done with this garbage. I am done with the whole fear. I am not going to live in fear anymore. And neither should you. There's no reason for it anymore. But if you're thinking about what's happening over in, in Russia and Ukraine right now, nothing wrong with keeping that in the back of your head and maybe having a plan in case something does go screwy. So I'll encourage my listeners and viewers out there too. Maybe get some extra gasoline. I know it's expensive, but you might have to do it. Get some extra dry goods. Load up on toilet paper. Not as ridiculous as it was two years ago, but enough. Maybe some paper towels. Maybe some ulterior means to get things done. Right? Try to work on a good neighbor-buddy system where you can help each other out in a time of crisis. Right? Water filtration, making sure your taps are good to go. You know, some alternative lighting sources, some alternative heating sources if need be. But just use common sense. Don't panic because that's the last thing we got to do is panic, 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 panic. Don't give in to the panic mode. Like Clint Eastwood said in uh, Heartbreak Ridge, don't give the son of a bitch the satisfaction, sir. Right? Don't give those sons of bitches the satisfaction. Hold your ground. Do what you think is right for you and your loved ones. You or your wife, you or your boyfriend, you your girlfriend, your partner, your life partner, however you may address it. Your kids, your loved ones, your elderly parents, your friends and your family alike. Everybody. Do what you think is right for you. We can get through this crisis, ladies and gentlemen. And it is a crisis because a lot of it has been forced upon us by elected officials. It's up to us. You, me, friends alike, to sort through the garbage and to find our own piece of paradise. Okay? It's that simple. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I've been Krusty Canuck on this beautiful 12th of March, 2022. I wish nothing but good things for all of you out there. Do the best you, you can, the best of your ability. Let's not buy the narrative anymore. Let's question the MSN. Let's question our government officials. Regardless of how you felt about the convoy or not, regardless of how you feel about what's going on about the war in Ukraine or not, question. Legitimate questions. Don't hop on the virtual bus and promote the echo chamber that all the Bidens and Trudeaus out there want you to, to listen to. Listen to your own hearts. Listen to your own conscience. What is going to be good for you and your loved ones? What's going to be good for you? What's going to be good for the country? It's not a crime to wave the flags I have behind me. It's not a crime to, to hate this. It's not a crime to wave the Ukrainian flag either, too. But let's look after this country as well, okay? There's a lot of history in this country that I'm proud of, and there's a lot of history in this country I'm not proud of. But it has to be learned and understood and acknowledged, Right? And it has to be taken for what it is, history. Let's create some great history, too, while we're at it. 
Let's not be ashamed anymore. Let's not be guilted into something we didn't do. Let's not be forced to do something we don't want to do. It's that simple. But like I say, I wish good things for all of you. And there will be light at the end of this manufactured darkness, ladies and gentlemen. I just know that in my soul, but I also know something else is going to be happening too. But uh, needless to say, it's good to be prepared and to be honest with ourselves and keep fighting the good fight to the best of our abilities. Like I say, it's been the 12th of March. <laughs> Still is 12th of March, 2022. I hope all the best and uh, stick around uh, come Tuesday for my live stream. And I'll take all your questions and uh, stand up for what's right, ladies and gentlemen. Do what we can to help each other out in these trying times. And like I always say, humanity and merit wins the day. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here. There you are all equally working. This has been another episode of the Krusty Canuck Podcast. Stay sane and thank you for listening. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast.